yesterday we started talking about filters and filters have a number of applications you also listed many of them uh, channel selection noise removal anti aliasing this refers to sampling which we talked about briefly yesterday if you want to sample a signal at a rate fs you had better make sure that all of the energy in the input signal is below fs by 2 okay because if there is any energy beyond fs by 2 it will get folded over or aliased into the band from 0 to fs by 2 so that's known as aliasing so the role of the filter is first to make sure that the energy beyond the band 0 to fs by 2 is sufficiently small it will never be zero but it will be very small okay so that is one place where it's used and also it's used in the uh, opposite way so here we use it before sampling when you want to reconstruct the continuous time signal from the sample signal what do you do from the samples you have to reconstruct the continuous time signal you have to again pass it through a filter the ideal reconstruction filter you know it has impulse response which is what huh? sync the impulse response is sync the frequency response is a rectangle so you multiply the samples by sync functions and shift them and add them you will get the uh, you will get the correct reconstruction and that corresponds to a brick wall filter that is a filter whose transition band it has a complete transmission in some band and zero in another band and the transmission between them is abrupt no real filter will be like that there will be some uh, range of frequencies where the transmission goes from a very high value to low value but you understand how a filter can be used okay there also a number of other things that uh, are possible okay so it is of interest to learn how to make uh, active filters so in general a filter is some transfer function so it will have some numerator and some denominator okay and you can uh, by choosing appropriately the numerator and denominator polynomials you can get the appropriate type of response okay now this business of getting the numerator and denominator from the response that you want or uh, to achieve the kind of response that you want that is filter synthesis and we will not deal with that okay so I mean equivalently you can have n and d or zeros and poles it is the same thing right. Now, if you go to MATLAB and uh, uh, look for filters you will see these commands which will uh, get you these transfer functions either the numerator and denominator polynomial coefficients or the poles and zeros of the filter from the specifications. Now what can the specification be the most common uh, type of specification is this okay so for instance just now you mentioned that let us say this is omega and this is the magnitude plot this is not a Bode plot okay so this is uh, a more I mean this is not as crude as a Bode plot right so you would normally want something like this so this is the pass band and that is the stop band I mean this is what you would ideally want I want to allow these frequencies and I want to uh, completely block those other frequencies so you are now never going to get this okay so the way you have to write the filter specifications you have to relax this a little more what you will have to say instead is
basically you have to allow for some deviations from this right what I mean is this. So, this is still the pass band okay, and I show a band a range of magnitudes that is the magnitude of the filter inside the pass band can be anywhere in this region. We cannot say that hey it has to be exactly let us say this is 1 it can it cannot be exactly 1. So, maybe it can be between 1 and 0.95 you have to specify it like that. Okay. Similarly, it cannot drop abruptly like this. So, you have to specify some band. So, it can fall inside this band in some way. Okay. So, it can be like that or it can be like this, but you have to at least leave it some range of frequencies where it can fall from a high to low value. Okay. And that bit here, this little part, it is known as the transition band. And finally, in the stop band also, you cannot insist that the magnitude has to be 0 inside the stop band. Okay. So, that is not possible. So, again, you have to allow some range for it. Okay. So, maybe you cannot have it exactly 0, but you can say that it has to be below let us say I am just giving a number below 0 0.01. Okay. You understand? So, then you can now have there is more than one I mean there are there is many degrees of freedom here. So, you can choose uh, how to use this you could have some response that just like touches these corners and does something like that or you can have something that may be varies inside and varies here also. But the point is if you allow for uh, some variation in the uh, pass band, some variation in the stop band and some transition band where the magnitude can go from high to low, you will be able to synthesize a filter. Okay. Why will you not be able to synthesize this? Why cannot we do this? What is the problem? Huh? Okay, let it go. Which one? Uh, no, it can have some phase, right? I mean, I have not specified the phase of this one. Okay. Uh, we cannot see. Uh, yeah, it is true that uh, it has. I mean, if you look at the ideal brick wall, uh, it has an impulse response ranging from minus infinity to infinity. Okay or uh, some minus from very large value to large value. Okay. So, of course, you can never make this exactly causal, but you, if you have a causal transfer function which starts from here, it is 0 before this okay. and then it takes a long time and it does this. It is like a shifted sin x by x. So, you can get close to that. I was looking more in terms of this function. Okay. So, we will make uh, obviously a filter with a finite number of components. So, that means that the order of the filter will be finite. So, if you write this magnitude square, what form will that be? H of s is n of s by d of s. You have already done this for some cases. So, what will be the form of this? So, let us say numerator is 1 and d of s is something, it is of nth order. So, what will I see here? Okay, for a first order filter, what would uh, h of j omega whole square be? The modular square of uh, h of j omega. Yeah, that is why I squared it. So, it is 1 by 1 plus omega square r square c square for a first order rc filter. So, it will be an even order polynomial of order 2 n for an nth order filter. Okay. So, for any finite n you will not be able to do this okay. have infinite slope there and uh, have it meet essentially you are meeting infinite constraints right. Okay. You cannot do that. So, anyway, uh, so you have to allow for uh, some room in the pass band and in the stop band where the magnitude response can vary and you also have to specify some transition band. Okay.
Now, uh, this is what I meant by specifications. Now, this is a low pass type of specification and you can imagine the other types right. So, you can have a specification that goes like that. That is you say that the response can be anywhere in this shaded area. What kind of filter is this? Huh? Band pass. So, essentially it allows this is the pass band, these are the stop bands and these little things here are the transition bands. And similarly, you can have high pass and band stop. There are four types of filters right. So, if you allow low frequencies and block high frequencies, it is low pass and the opposite if you allow high frequencies and block low ones, it is high pass. Similarly, if you allow a band of frequencies, but block both uh, below and above that, that is band pass and the counterpart of this is band stop okay, or band elimination filter. So, these are specifications and uh, from these specifications to uh, the filter polynomial, the polynomial that actually fits this that we won't worry about at all okay so there are books there are uh, like fat books with uh, uh, tables in them very big tables so you can uh, see you can search for a book by zverev it's called handbook on filters which lists like pages and pages of uh, component values and polynomial coefficients and so on okay now what we will do is uh, given a polynomial how to realize the filter using active components that is our concern okay so, any of these filters you can uh, find transfer functions which can be realized using R cells and C's. We will instead uh, start from the polynomials and use uh, active components to realize them. Is it okay? So, for uh, the synthesis itself, you can look at MATLAB or books like Zware. So, this is quite easy. Actually, if you look at some commands in MATLAB. Uh, within a few seconds you can get from the specifications to the polynomials or poles and zeros okay now uh, even uh, we will make a further simplification because this is not a course exclusively on filter design so this is a filter and we will of course, assume that the number of zeros is less than or equal to the number of poles. This is required if it has to be realizable at all, otherwise we cannot do that. You can realize digital filters with only zeros perhaps, but uh, we cannot do analog filters. Okay. So, now what do we know about high order polynomials? I mean, is there some way of simplifying them? Or? Hmm? What's that? Factorize. So, how do you factorize them? I mean, is there some guaranteed factorization that is possible? Numerator is uh, smaller. No, no, I mean, I am only looking at each polynomial. Each of them is a polynomial in S. So, what can you, how do you, uh, can you reduce the uh, can you factorize a polynomial into lower order polynomials? Yes or no? Yes. So, what order? So, this can always be done that is if you have a if you have an nth order polynomial with real coefficients of course, you will have real coefficients when you use real components in the circuit. This can always be factorized into either n by 2 second order polynomials also with real coefficients, because if you allow coefficients to be complex, you can factorize them into n first order terms right, because you have n roots after all the roots can be complex and all you have to do is write s minus that root and go all the way. So, this is for even n and for odd n you will have n minus 1 by 2 second order polynomials with real coefficients plus 1 first order polynomial also with real coefficients. Okay. 
So, any uh, polynomial can be decomposed into uh, lower order polynomials like this. Okay. Is this fine? This you know already, right? I mean, because any polynomial, if you look at it in general, it will have either uh, uh, n by 2 complex conjugate uh, pairs of roots, right? And you can pair each complex conjugate pair into a second order polynomial with real coefficients. I think you have done all this in uh, Signalson systems or something, right? You know this or no? This part I think you know, maybe even from before, from high school or something. Okay. So, how does this help us? Why is this of relevance to us? Huh? Second order polynomial? Now, everything is a filter. I mean, even the higher order polynomial stuff is a filter. Partial fractions. Yeah. Okay, a partial fractions can be done, but that is actually not a preferred way of making filters for other reasons I will tell you. So, let me for simplicity take initially consider uh, filters of this type 1 by d of s, the numerator is 1. What kind of filter would this be? A low pass or high pass or low pass, right? I think because the denominator can only increase with frequency and then kill the response. So, this is a typically a low pass response is like this, but it does not have to be it could have some zeros also, but uh, it is like that. So, what you can do is for instance you can make it into you can decompose it into products of uh, first and second order terms. Okay. So, obviously, this is equal to multiplying first order filters, uh, first order filter responses and second order filter responses. So, what does this mean in implementation? Cascade, right. So, if you want uh, let us say a tenth order filter, you can make five second order filters and put them one after another. Similarly, if you want a ninth order filter, you put you have one first order filter and four second order filters and put them one after another. Okay. So, the point is actually uh, while synthesizing active filters, we can confine ourselves to uh, getting the topologies for first and second order filters that is all. Then we can make any filter. Okay. Is this fine? I mean there is not like uh, we do not have to go on with oh yeah here is a circuit for first order, here is a circuit for second order and third order and fourth order and so on. So, we can stop at second order. Now, this is not complete in that there are some uh, types of realizations where it is not a cascade. Okay. So, the entire thing is realized in one shot, but we do not have to worry about those things for now this is a good enough realization and it is also a practical enough realization. Okay. Now, actually there was another interesting comment he made that uh, you can also uh, expand anything like this into partial fractions, right. What kind of realization will we get then? Parallel that, that is ok. So, what does this mean? In this case I mean these uh, these d1s and those d1s are different right uh, in fact they may have uh, some other things also uh, there is not guaranteed that the numerator is one right okay so then you will have multiple responses which will add together okay this it turns out is generally a very bad way of realizing it or at least not a very robust way. Any ideas why? Delay, what delay? Okay. So, I mean this is a very open ended question. So, let us say I have a let us say I just have a fourth order filter okay, for simplicity, fourth order low pass filter. 
okay now at low frequencies it will be 1 let us say the magnitude and at high frequencies how do you expect it to behave yeah it will fall but uh, which way will, how will it fall I mean what what rate minus minus 80 dB per decade okay now if you decompose it into two second order terms okay so what will happen is the first one will uh, fall at minus 40 the second one will also fall at uh, minus 40 maybe it is at a different offset and these two multiplied together will give you minus 80 okay the point is let us say there is some error in realizing one of these filters so let us say this moves a little bit this way or that way the effect is somewhat benign you still get a minus 80 db per decade but the response also moves a little bit okay what i mean is i mean you multiply this with uh, the black line with any of the three red lines you will get minus 80 db per decade now when you add up things like this if all the coefficients are exact you will of course get minus 80 db per decade okay but if you look at it each of these by itself has minus 40 db per decade okay so let me take only two of them now if the coefficients are in error it turns out that this response the way you get a very high uh, roll off here is because this signal cancels that signal and so on all those things will happen okay so if it doesn't cancel perfectly it can do something like that okay so the stop band uh, can be very poor the only way like when you have multiple parallel paths you have to get very high attenuation at high frequencies but each of the paths is giving relatively low attenuation the only way you get very high attenuation is because some of these terms somehow magically cancel if the coefficients are exact but when you rely on cancellation you have a problem if you have small deviations the what is zero can become quite large okay so whereas if you have cascade then a small deviation will result in equally small deviation outside okay so that's why we don't uh, realize it using partial fraction expansions in general we don't do this like occasionally if you know that your component variation is not uh, so bad you could probably try using this okay so we will confine ourselves to first and second order active filters okay now how do we do them actually i think you already know at least the first order active filter you know how do you make that how do you make a first order passive filter let's first also look at uh, low pass we can then figure out how to make other kinds of filters also it turns out that low pass filters are the ones that are most frequently used okay and you would also realize that this high pass and uh, band stop filters can never be realized exactly because I mean in their exact form they will uh, like a high pass filter will have low gain at uh, DC and then at some point the gain increases to let us say 1 and then it remains that way up to infinite frequency but that will never happen no real active component will give you uh, will let you transmit signal at infinite frequency so somewhere at some high frequency it will roll off again okay so every real system has an eventual low of low pass behavior okay so we will consider low pass and mainly band pass and others also we will show how to synthesize but you have to realize that there are some limitations okay so how do you make a first order uh, low pass filter any low pass filter forget uh, active rc okay and what is the transfer function 1 by 1 plus SCR okay and this you knew already essentially it is uh, 1 by 1 plus S by P 1 okay. Yeah I meant active stuff but in general even this will not do that. Okay.
Okay, so you are saying why will this not give uh, unity gain at the infinite frequency, right? That's what that's your question. So, if this is all it is, it will do that. The Bode plot will look like that. Okay, but you have to realize that every uh, for the, there is no pure capacitor or resistor or uh, inductor or anything. Everything will have everything. So, for instance, if you simply consider a small series resistance with the capacitor, the wires of the capacitor will have resistance and there will be a small parasitic capacitor across the resistor. Any time you have a resistor with a finite dimension because I mean you have the terminals of the resistor between that there will be some capacitors. So, at very high frequencies this is a short okay, and this capacitance is a significant one. So, at very high frequencies it is eventually a low pass filter also right. So, if this is some small R s and C p. So, at 1 by R s C p which may be very high frequencies it will fall off again. So, this always happens. Now, this lumped uh, component stuff right when we say that this is a capacitor that is only an approximation like everything is uh, described by these four Maxwell's equations and you will have electric and magnetic fields in everything. It is only that uh, of course, you know also know from uh, are you taking electromagnetics now? Huh? Oh, last semester you know that you, are, you can almost solve no problems right I mean it is impossible to solve any problem in electromagnetics properly it is so difficult uh, forget I mean you know for a single component. Hmm? Uh, if you have multiple components you are just finished. So, this approximation is what helps you that uh, what is the difficulty with electromagnetics? I also had difficulty. What is the difficulty with the electromagnetics in particular the compared to other subjects? Huh? Partial differential equations. Yeah, I think that is the problem actually everything is three dimensional right that is the problem. So, that is why transmission lines are easier in that Although things are three dimensional, you can uh, ignore two of the dimensions and eventually it is a 1D problem. So, transmission lines, although they are like you can think of them as more complex versions of the initial problems, the, the problems in EM are very hard to solve, right. So, this lumping what it does is and the things depend on uh, the physical uh, distribution of uh, components, okay, how it is distributed in space. What we do is when we write Ohm's law and so on. The most important thing that happens is that exactly how these uh, plates are in space all those things are gone right. You only relate the terminal voltages to the terminal currents. So, that is why it becomes easy to analyze otherwise it becomes very difficult of course and finally, it is also useful in that there are actually frequency ranges where it does behave largely like this. Once you go beyond a certain frequency range it does not uh, work. Okay. I think you must have seen the derivation of Kirchhoff's voltage and current law from uh, Maxwell's equations right. What is the what are the conditions under which they hold? Have you seen it or not? Or you thought I would not ask the next question and said yes. <laughs> what is the condition? I mean I am not asking you to derive it, but sir. Mag have you seen this? I mean KCL and KVL come from Maxwell's equations. Where? I mean where does KCL come from? Huh? charge conservation or no local charge accumulation right. I mean charge can be conserved, but it could be accumulating somewhere, but you do not have that. So, that is why you have uh, uh, this and then uh, yeah, yeah. So, I know. So, when does uh, curl of E is what rate of change of magnetic field right. So, yeah, yeah. So, what are the conditions for uh, KCL and KVL to hold right. Yeah, but you never have that. I mean, so what should happen? I mean, to the loop should be very small, right? I mean, like only when the dimensions are very small and very small compared to what? I mean, what's that? Ah, wavelength. Right. So, when you have uh, signals of uh, certain frequency it corresponds to some wavelength. If your circuits are much much smaller than the wavelengths then these things are by and large true. Okay. I mean you must have uh, seen these antenna problems where the current here is not the same as the current there and so on. Okay. But antenna is a wire right. If you apply KCL the current everywhere is the same. I mean how can this be? The thing is I mean antenna has a length which is 
comparable to the wavelength otherwise it's not an antenna okay so that's why you have uh, i mean anyway that's uh, that's the reason these uh, uh, analysis of uh, lump circuits is very easy but you have to remember that as you uh, either make the circuits bigger or more likely make the frequency higher and higher there are other effects that come in you can still model them with other lumped elements for instance the capacitor is not just a capacitor you may have to put a series resistor and a series inductor and similarly to a resistor you add capacitor and inductor and to an inductor you add a resistor and a capacitor so <laughs> like finally everything is a mishmash of everything okay so that's an aside but we can still i mean this uh, lumped regime is still useful okay as long as that's why we also keep telling you that in the lab you keep the circuits compact and so on if you make the loop very large what happens is that it can pick up stray magnetic fields and you expect things that you won't expect by kirchhoff's law you could say hey i have connected it to the output of the op amp but what you see in the oscilloscope looks very different okay. so we have this uh, equation and how do you make an active filter corresponding to this do you know yeah so i think we already know the answer to this you can uh, i mean when we discuss the integrator we said that you can't make an integrator by itself you have to have feedback resistor that gave you a first order low pass uh, filter or you can think of the inverting amplifier instead of the feedback element being only a resistor you put r and c in parallel so the impedance goes down with frequency because it's always the feedback impedance divided by the input impedance right so if the feedback impedance goes down with frequency you will have a low pass filter okay but i will just show you as a toy problem how you can synthesize the higher order filter okay this applies even to much higher orders than 2 you can do it for anything so the way you go about doing it is the following you just rearrange the equations i'll keep this terminology the c and r refer to this i could use or maybe i'll use this okay 1 plus s by p1 is vi okay and i can write this as v0 minus vi equals minus v0 times s by p1 and the same thing can also be written as v0 minus vi times p1 by s equals v0 okay the way to write this is the uh, following active filters in general the building blocks of active filters are integrators okay so you know that to make a filter you need either a capacitor or an inductor and what the capacitor or inductor realizes is an integral in the voltage current relationship a capacitor integrates the current to give you the voltage and an inductor integrates the voltage to give you the current so now uh, using active circuits we also know how to make an integrator right we know that an op amp with a capacitor and feedback around it behaves like an integrator of course we have the condition that the eventually the op amp has to have dc negative feedback around it okay so you assume that it will have dc negative feedback construct the whole circuit and then verify if it indeed does have it right so we will realize everything using an integrator so now what is this what is this saying this equation v not is the integral of minus v not plus vi right what is the transfer function of this or what's the output here we notice minus 1 by scr1 times v1 okay so you have to assume that there is dc negative feedback somehow this is not the complete circuit okay a 
if I add this, what is the output? Minus 1 upon S A R 2 times V 2 and then I can go on adding more branches like that, right. It will give me minus 1 by S C R 3 times V 3. This is essentially like the summing amplifier instead of uh, resistor and feedback we have a capacitor and feedback. So, this is a summing integrator and the weights of uh, each input can be modified by changing the input resistor ok. Is this fine? So, what we do in active filter design is to rearrange the equations. So, that we realize weighted summations or weighted uh, integration ok of a number of inputs. Is this ok? I mean this looks like a very convoluted way to get a first order response, but this is useful for higher order. So, any questions? I mean keep in mind we also have the negative signs here ok. So, let me go back to my equation what did I have? So, now this V naught is the output of an integrator right because it is this integration function integration transfer function times weighted combination of V naught and V i ok. Is this clear? Just uh, uh, bear with me through this because you already know the answer may be it is boring, but this is how you would uh, do it for higher order stuff. So, if I realize this using a using this type of structure how many inputs do I need? How many inputs do I need? I mean this is the output of an integrator and how many terms does it have? 2 ok. So, I need basically Remember this, uh, let me put this negative stuff in here. So, this already realizes the negative signs also, ok. And what should the two inputs be? If this has to be V naught, huh? V naught and minus V i, ok. And what do we do? V naught is here, so you just connect it up. That way. It is exactly the same circuit, right, that you know. And the values of R1 and R2, you look for the weights of V naught and V i here and then adjust, ok. So, if you put minus V i here, here you will get V i times. 1 plus 1 by 1 plus S C R if you adjust both of these to be R and C ok. Of course, if you assume that this input is V i you will get an additional minus sign is this ok. So, you rearrange the equations that you want from the transfer function. So, that you realize integration ok integrator is the building block. Actually, it turns out you can also use differentiation as building block and uh, build these filters, but that is disadvantageous for a number of reasons. It turns out that uh, these are topics we won't deal with here. The noise from op amps will get amplified at high frequencies because the differentiator has higher gain at high frequencies, and so we don't use that. We uh, prefer to use integrators to implement our implement our filters. Okay, is this fine? So, while this looks like a roundabout way of doing it, let us now try a second order filter. You can calculate the transfer functions and so on later. First, let me just write the equations.
So, this is a second order filter what kind of filter is it from V naught to uh, from V i to V naught a low pass or high pass or what is it low pass obviously the impedance of the series branch uh, increases with frequency and the impedance of the capacitor reduces with frequency ok. So, it is a second order low pass filter. Now, I have marked uh, the two state variables of the uh, circuit it can also be done in other ways, but I will just show this like this. Uh, the reason I do this is that this I L you know it is basically 1 over S L times the voltage across the inductor right. And similarly, this V C is 1 over S C times the current through the capacitor ok. So, essentially those are the state variables of the circuit right and each one is basically an integral of some uh, electrical quantity through the element electrical quantity related to the element is this ok. So, now let us uh, write the different quantities in the circuit what is this voltage in terms of the input and the state variables what is the voltage here V i minus I l times r ok and the output voltage is V c itself right V naught equals V c. So, from here on I will simply use V naught here. So, again this is like more general than necessary, but you know that when you want to synthesize something else perhaps this is useful ok. So, what is the voltage across the inductor? No, no in terms of uh, in terms of this and some other things right. So, it is basically V i minus I l r minus V naught this is the voltage across the inductor. So, and how is the current related to this current I l related to this? So, again I have got it in the same form this uh, some quantity here is a weighted summation integrated ok. And in this case it is very easy. So, the capacitor voltage V naught what is it? What is it related to? The capacitor voltage is the integral of something it is the integral of what? Huh? 1 over S c times I l actually it has only one input. So, the way I have done this is to uh, write it as two integration operations which we can then implement using our active integrator using the op amp is this ok. Now, uh, in the in the passive circuit we have the inductor current and the capacitor voltage as state variables ok. Now, in our integrator what are the inputs and outputs? What is the input and output both are voltages right our integrator takes a voltage input and gives a voltage output. So, I have to fix this part here the output is a current and here the input is a current ok. Any idea how to fix this? I mean this is just a some algebraic operation or not even algebraic. So, let us say I multiply this by r and this by r nothing changes. So, now this side becomes a voltage right and the input is also a voltage and similarly here I multiply this by r and I multiply this by r ok. So, this is a voltage and this is a voltage. So, instead of I l times r I will call this V l. Oh, so, I maybe I should have used a different symbol here this V l is not the voltage across the inductor ok. Maybe I will just call it V l hat or something this is not the voltage across the inductor it is the current through the inductor scaled by the resistance r ok. So, I have now ok. 
answered. Ah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Thanks. Okay. So everything I write in terms of that new voltage. So how many integrators do I need to realize this? Obviously, two, right? Let me call this C prime because I don't want you to get confused between the capacitance value in the passive filter and this. Okay, so you can choose uh, any value of C you want. I'll choose the same value of C in both cases, but this is not necessary. So there are many things we have to do. We have to now complete the circuit and also make sure that all integrators are in a negative feedback loop. Okay. So, what is the there are two integrators, what is the output of this integrator the first one? I mean we have to assign something. So, let us say this is V L hat and this is V naught. Okay. Then how do we proceed? So, first of all what should the inputs be? Uh, how many inputs does this integrator need? 3 and what are the inputs? Bear in mind the integrator produces a negative sign. Huh? Minus V i, V l and V o right. It is basically the inverted versions of those and then here this one what does it need? First one this is minus V o no I mean if I absorb the minus sign into this it is like that right ok and so what should be the input here minus V l ok. So, what should I do now? Connect this here, connect this here, it looks extremely messy, and then what else? How do I get this minus VL? I mean, is it available in the circuit or do I have to do something? I, I have only V L available in the circuit. So, how do I get minus V L from V L? What is that? Well, can we get a gain of minus 1? Yeah, what were you suggesting? Yeah, yeah, that is correct. So, I will come to that, that also can be done. So, he is saying I hey, will use V I and minus V L and minus V not here, but uh, it does not really solve anything. So, if we do it this way, so we will need an inverting amplifier which is like that ok. Obviously, this is not the way to draw circuits, this looks extremely messy and incomprehensible, but uh, we will draw it more cleanly, there is a standard way to do it. Now, if we do uh, what he is suggesting. What should the inputs be here? You want minus V L. Okay. So, what should the inputs be? The three inputs here, what should they be? V i minus V L minus V O and the other one. So, if you give minus V L to this, what do we get? Huh? V out. we get V out yeah. So, we get V out and then how do we complete the circuit? So, you still need but at least this resulted in a better drawn circuit. So, 
and the way this is normally drawn is this is we had minus V L hat fading through a resistor right. Okay. So, this is a circuit actually this and that are like very similar to each other. Okay. Now, we have to choose the component values I have been like uh, very abusive of notation and so on that you can do. So, what you can uh, do is uh, assume that this is C and then uh, or maybe R 1 C 1, R 2 C 2 and R 3 and derive the transfer function from V i to V o. Okay. So, you can do that uh, yourself as an exercise and this let this be R and R because we simply, simply want to invert it with a gain of 1 okay. and you can also try it for the other circuit actually you will find that it is not very different from this. Okay. So, this is actually a very popular circuit block uh, and what is interesting also also to find out V L by V I okay. find out V L by V I and V naught by V I and we will continue the discussion from that. Okay. Resistance? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, this should be fed through a resistance. Thanks. Is it okay?